Uh, just to introduce a few people, you saw on uh, the Stevenson thing that Marlene Mori is one of the board members for the Japanese Canadian Survivors Health and Wellness Fund Society. It's an awfully long name. Uh, she has been represented uh, Manitoba and, and our air, the prairie areas uh, since the inception of the fund uh, to get it going. And Caroline and myself, uh, we were brought on board uh, in early December uh, to get all of the preparations ready for this launch today. So the, the three of us uh, have been working behind the scenes. Marlene, more than us, uh, she's been working on this for over a year now. I also want to thank uh, a few of the people. I may have missed someone, but of course, JCAM, because JCAM has offered at any time, if you have questions, you can always just stop in here, uh, phone here, whatever. The uh, Manitoba Buddhist Temple, Harvey Feather, thank you for all your support there. Uh, Cheryl, where are you? Cheryl Hosizaki, yeah, put your hand up. She's come in from Dryden. She's our volunteer that is looking after all those people in Dryden. How many are there, Cheryl? Four. What are they, two families, Hoshizaki and Mitanis? <laughs> yeah. um, and then also, the, we have a slew of volunteers here, Valerie, Kelly, Robert, Diane, who uh, helped get the refreshments together this morning, Teresa, Thomas, and Mona has uh, prepared manju for, for you to enjoy later as well. So we thank all of our volunteers. Uh, for helping out today we're truly uh, you know when we when we're having these meetings we're having a lot of zoom meetings with all of those outreach workers from across canada and carolyn and i just keep we keep looking at each other on zoom with these funny faces because we're like it's so easy in manitoba we just like it's so complicated in the other places in terms of finding out who all these people are making sure their ids are all good ah we all know you guys so it's a lot easier Again, um, I missed one name, but those are all the names of all the um, outreach workers in the other areas, just for your information. That's on the website. You can always check that out later. Oh, what did I do? There we go. Caroline, do you, I don't really have to go over, we don't really need to go over this again. They went over it in the Stevenson uh, um, presentation. Um, but again, it's a $100 million legacy uh, to the uh, due from the BC government due to their actions during World War II or pre April 1st, 1949. And we are part of one of six pillars of that hundred million. So the, the six pillars are for education. So you may have noticed there have been some scholarships that have been given out through education funding, anti racism. The monument, I hope all of you have checked names on the monument that's going to go up in Victoria, heritage preservation, community and culture, JCAM uh, is fortunate enough to be able to better our center, thank you to this, uh, the, the uh, JCLS, and seniors health and wellness, and this is where we fall, seniors health and wellness. Um, so even though we are part of JCLS, we are a separate entity from JCLS. Okay, it's a, it's a minor detail, I guess, in the big picture, but um, okay, I'm going to pass this to Caroline. Um, Joanne had already gone through all the grants, but just for a refresher, uh, the grant one was in 2021. It was for $650. That's considered an entitlement now. So you don't have to have any proof or anything. You just have to indicate that you're applying for that. If you had already applied for it, we have that record and we know that. And then we'll adjust your application. And the second grant is the new one and it's for the 4,500. And you have to list your health and wellness needs. So we have about 11 different categories. We'll have a sheet that you can look at and you just need to choose at least one. And you could just, uh, A is a common one. It has minerals and the vitamin supplements. This is, that's all you need to put is A. Um, it's coded so that again, your privacy, it's not that you have to say, oh, I have this disease or I have this illness or anything. You just put down one of the letters to let us know which need you have. 
And again, the eligibility of Japanese descent born before April 1st, 1949. So that's a key one. If you're born April 1st, 1950, you are not eligible. So it has to be before that April 1st, 1949. And then again, lived in BC before that date, or your parents or grandparents lived before that date in BC. So again, um, you could be born 1948, you were born in Winnipeg here, but if you had your parents or your grandparents that were in BC before the 1949 date, then you are eligible. And then directly impacted by the actions of the BC government. Well, everybody knows that everybody was uprooted, relocated, evacuated. We lost, a, a, people lost a lot of their property and uh, everything like that. So that's, again, why this uh, grant is being used or have been developed. So again, who is the survivor? Japanese descent, and it includes anybody who could have been displaced to internment camps, sugar beets, road camps, or was, went back to Japan or went to Japan. Uh, people who were not displaced but were living still in BC. So they could be living in Kelowna, which is outside that Vancouver 100 mile but they are still eligible because at that point in time, they were not allowed to travel. They were restricted on things that you could do. And then persons who after their families left BC and were born prior to April 1st, 1949. And the April 1st is the date they chose because it's the day Japanese Canadians were given the full voting rights and the legal restrictions used to control the movement of Japanese Canadians were removed. So that's what that date is for. Application process again, online by yourself or through a representative, or you could work with either Pamela and I, and we can help you with that application process. Oops, are you done? What happened? Ah, okay. All right, and again, just to uh, go over again, personal ID, birth certificate, passport, um, anything that has your ID and it has to show your birth date that's before April 1st, 1949. And then the proof of current address is because we are mailing out checks. So we want to make sure we have a valid address that we're sending the check to. So again, your Manitoba health, the utility bill, anything like that is sufficient. We just have to make sure it's the same address that you're putting on your application form is the same that you have proof that that's where your mail is going to. Okay, what am I doing? Okay, so this is the paper form that we have for you today. Uh, we tried to make it, it nationally, it's the same across the country. Um, and so, hey, oh, look at that. So for, for when you're filling it out, you can put the date, February 1st, leave the next section blank because we have a code for what this event is called. So Caroline and I will fill that in. Oh, oh there we go. First name, middle name, last name. This is what your ID says today. Okay. If you were born with different name, put both your first and last name here. So if they're different, uh, then put both names there okay uh, and that allows us to research back to uh, verify the bc ties with landscapes of injustice or or other means um, here year of birth only please only put your year this is part of the privacy protocols that they've put in place you're going to fill in your year when you hand in your paper to caroline and i we're going to look at your id and we have a special code for the month and date to ensure that your birth date is not out there wherever it is uh, and someone can steal your identity. Okay, so that's for your own protection. Please just put year of birth, your birthplace, your email if you have, okay, and phone number, your mailing address. This is the part that it should um, agree with the second piece proof of residence, okay, because that's where your check will be mailed to. All right. Um, 
Yeah, current residents. So if, if, if you have a relative that's in a nursing home, and I know nursing homes do not want mail directly to the nursing home, then you give a mailing address of their legal address of their POA or, or uh, whatever. Um, provide the first and last names of your parents or grandparents. You don't have to do both. If your parents were living in BC, put your parents' names. If it was your grandparents, put your grandparents. It, it, it's uh, one or the other, okay? The most recent, closest rela relative to you. So parents first, then grandparents if necessary. Right beside it is that letter of health and wellness category selected. That's what Caroline was talking about. Vitamins, minerals, all of that kind of stuff. We have sheets on each of those tables, laminated papers that list all of the categories you can choose. Again, just pick one. There, you don't need to prove it. Just pick one, okay? We don't need to see bills and all that. I can't even keep track of my own bills. I, I don't know how I, if I had to, <laughs> to keep track of your bills, I wouldn't be able to do it. If you are a representative, if you're representing someone and filling out the form on their behalf, this is where you're going to fill in your first name, last name, your relationship to that survivor, your contact info. Today, survivors, if you are a survivor, you can sign, representatives can sign, date it. And then Caroline and I are going to be in the MPR here. We have to do it uh, one person at a time for privacy, of course. We're gonna go through your form, look at your ID, proof of residence, we'll check it off. We're gonna give you a little paper to take with you back, go have coffee, tea, manju, and, and catch up with everybody, okay? Once you give us that paper, you're registered, you're done, okay? Caroline and I may get back to you on something uh, if necessary, but you do not have to uh, fill out any other forms for us. Okay, once it's into us, you are completely done. We may get in touch with you to make sure you got your check and that you've cashed it. Apparently the grant one, people got the check and many people didn't cash it. So there's a lot of $650 checks lying around somewhere. Um, so we, once you do get the check, please make sure that you cash it right away. Don't, don't forget about it. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, so this is that whole list of health and wellness uh, things. So many categories, everybody fits in one. I fit in one, I'm not before 1949, I could pick one, okay? So again, one is enough. If you're not sure, just put A, A works. Um, vitamins, supplements, hygiene projects, I don't know, um, A also works, everything works, okay? So um, those papers, again, are on those tables at the back. So when you are filling out your forms, you can just uh, refer to those forms. Teresa and Kelly are going to be uh, walking around too to help. If you have any questions with the forms or the what letter to pick and that, they're gonna be walking around and helping you as well, okay? And if you still aren't sure, just come and see Caroline and I, and we'll figure it out together. Um, that's easy to do, okay? Oh. Oh, there we go. Okay, now the online application is a little more, is a little trickier because um, you have to go to the website, which is fine. You click on apply and you're gonna enter all the information like the paper form, but there's no one to attest to your ID and proof of residence. And we do not want you to upload or email or mail any personal documents at all. Again, it has to do with privacy and ensuring that your ID is kept safe, okay? What they are asking for is a letter from a notary public. And we will have that standard form. You take it to the notary, uh, notary public. They'll look at your ID, your legal address, and then they'll attest to, yes, it is correct. And that's what you're gonna upload. So none of your information is on that notary form, but because it's a notary signing it, we know that everything is confirmed. If you do do it online, um, the system will pick up that we are in, that you are applying from Manitoba or Saskatchewan or Northwest Ontario. And 99% of the time, it's gonna go to Caroline or I by region. But there may be the odd time, it might go to someone in Calgary or it might go to someone in Toronto. And that notary form is very important to have, okay? If you go online today, the notary form is not there. That's why doing the paper today is much easier. 
Um, but if you are doing it online, submit without the notary form. Because as soon as you press that submit button, you're applied. You're alive at time of application, which is their stipulation, the BC government stipulation. You have to be alive at time of application. If it's an incomplete application, doesn't matter. You're alive, you've sent in the application, we get the notary from you after, okay? So if you're talking to other people that are perhaps not here today or outside of Winnipeg and are gonna be doing it online, just tell them to fill out that form. Don't worry about the notary, just fill out the form and press submit. Caroline and I will follow up with them after, okay? Um, but it, easiest, do the paper today. This is the website, jcwellness.org. When you go to the website, you're gonna see this. And if you're applying online, you're gonna click this apply button right up here. So you click on that apply button and you're gonna to come to this left side of the page and you have to scroll up. This is still the same page. I've just scrolled up and you'll see this purple button apply here. You just click that and fill out the form. Okay, so that's on the website. Again, don't worry about the notary. That's all the information we have. Um, this is Caroline and, and my uh, information for as outreach workers. We also are going to be here at the center. So if you do not drop off or if some, you know of somebody that wants to bring in the paper form, Caroline's gonna be here Mondays and Wednesdays, sort of an after work thing if people are working and they're bringing in for their parents or grandparents. And I'm always here. <laughs> I'm always here. So you can drop in uh, during business hours or give me a call to see if I'm here and then you just come in and we'll process the paper form at that time. Okay, so spread the word so that we can get uh, all of the people possible. Okay, did I miss anything? No, any questions? Did we explain everything? Oh, good. Oh, wait, do we have a question? Robert is li Robert's live streaming to Saskatchewan and Northwest Ontario and everything too. So any questions online, Robert, that you notice? Nope. Oh, good. Oh, Keiko. Yes, so anybody in Japan or overseas anywhere, they also can access the website and they can do it that way. Um, and, the, and the check will be sent or money, however they're going to send the money will be sent uh, directly to them in Japan. But they will have to have the notary form eventually, like once it up, it's up, yes. So if you know of anybody in Japan or Australia or Europe, uh, wherever, Brazil, um, just tell them to go, the website will be up and they can apply from there, okay? Any other questions? Seeing none, yay, thank you.